Hi friends, Steve here at Valhalla Cemetery in North Hollywood once again. If you've watched my channel before, you know I've been here quite a few times before. There are so many notable and famous people buried here. But today I'm here to visit the final resting place of Rudd Weatherwax, who had a huge part to play in the TV show Lassie. Well, in some of the movies too. So I'm going to visit his gravesite, as well as a couple of others from this classic TV show. Plus I'm going to share with you where many of the other cast members are today. Lassie was one of the longest running TV shows in American TV history, airing for 19 seasons from 1954 to 1973. It was based on the best-selling 1940 novel written by novelist Eric Knight. The first movie based on the book was released by MGM in 1943, and it was so successful that it was followed by six more movies in the 1940s and 50s. The story really is timeless, and additional movies were also released in 1978, 1994 and 2005. But today I'm focusing just on the very popular TV show. It's pretty hard to believe that the story was first published 80 years ago and the TV show first aired 66 years ago. Knight was a major in the US Army and sadly on January 15, 1943, at the young age of 45, died in a transport plane crash in South America. He's buried in LeMay, Missouri, just south of St. Louis. Rudd Weatherwax, the famous dog trainer and co-creator of the TV show, is buried here right behind this fountain and just to the right or east of this outdoor mausoleum. And the story about how he became co-creator of the show is a very fascinating one. Weatherwax's dog Pal was the dog that played Lassie in the movies, and he was the trainer. But by the 1950s, apparently the movies had run their course, and MGM decided not to make any more Lassie movies. And according to his Wikipedia page, MGM agreed to give Weatherwax the rights to the Lassie name in lieu of his salary for the last year of work he did on the films. So at this point he owned the screen rights to Lassie. A couple of years later he partnered with producer Robert Maxwell and the Lassie TV show was born. His dog Pal was in the pilot, but Pal's descendants played Lassie in the years to come. I also think it's very interesting that Rudd Weatherwax wasn't the only famous Weatherwax in the family. You might be wondering why I'm standing in front of Ken Weatherwax's niche here in this uh, outdoor columbarium. After all, he wasn't in the TV show Lassie, but his brother was, his half-brother was. Many of you, I'm sure, will recognize the name Ken Weatherwax as the young actor who played Pugsley on the very popular TV show The Addams Family. In the first few seasons of The Lassie Show, his brother Joey Vieira, whose stage name was Donald Keeler, played the role of Porky on The Lassie series. I wasn't able to find much information about him online, and the information I did find was conflicting, but it appears that Vieira was born on April 8, 1944, and if he is still alive, that would make him 76 years old. If any of you happen to know for sure, please let us know in the comments section down below. So let me go around the corner here. This is, uh, as I said, an outdoor mausoleum you can see behind me. And I'm going to show you Red Weatherwax's final resting place. His gravesite is not even halfway down this walkway, just two rows to the right. And I think it's neat that his nephew Ken chose to be laid to rest here close to his uncle, who died nearly 30 years earlier. Red Weatherwax died in Mission Hills, California, which is not far from here, on February 25th, 1985, at the age of 77. Pal, who played the first Lassie, died on June 18, 1958, at the age of 18, not far from here in North Hollywood, at the Weatherwax Ranch. And surprisingly, I wasn't able to find any information online about producer and co-creator Robert Maxwell's final resting place. He died on February 3, 1971, at the age of 63, in Toronto, Canada, but I wasn't able to locate any burial information for him. And that's a plane flying out of the Burbank Airport, which is just next door to the cemetery. Now, it's not unusual in Southern California to see coyotes in the cemeteries. But when I started to pan around Weatherwax's grave, I was definitely surprised to see this one so close. At first, I thought maybe it was Lassie coming home. But then I realized it was a coyote, and I was glad it was going the other direction. Forest Lawn Memorial Park in the Hollywood Hills is about 15 minutes south of here. And I'm heading there next. I've definitely seen deer and coyotes there in the past, but because it's in a more rustic area and actually in the hills, I wasn't surprised to see them. Here at Valhalla Cemetery though, the cemetery is pretty much surrounded by neighborhoods 
and businesses, so I'm not even sure how a coyote would find its way here. Coyotes are okay, but I definitely prefer the roadrunners that I see on my walks every day in Palm Springs. Actor Hugh Riley played Paul Martin, the father on the show, and he's laid to rest here at Forest Lawn in the Hollywood Hills, and his gravesite is one of the easier ones to find here. You enter through the front gates, you make the very first right-hand turn, go up to the top of the hill, and his gravesite is on the right-hand side in the sheltering hills section. And something pretty funny and weird happened to me at his gravesite. Oh, and before I forget, I wanted to let you know that if you make it to the end of this video, I have something really interesting to share with you. I usually try to include something different or interesting or surprising at the end of the video, just as a bonus for those of you who have made it all the way through to the end. By coincidence, last week I happened to be here in this cemetery in this very same section searching for the gravesite of someone else not related to this video at all. And by accident, if you believe in accidents, I happened to come across this gravesite right here. The image of the drama mask grabbed my attention, but I didn't recognize the name. I also really like the epitaph that reads, everything will work out just fine, or not. So I took a picture of the headstone with the intention of looking her up online once I got home, but I had hundreds and hundreds of photos and videos from my day at the cemetery, and I completely forgot all about this one. But I guess Beverly did not want to be forgotten. While searching for Hugh Riley's gravesite today, I discovered that Beverly's gravesite is right next to his to the right. If I had just looked to the left last week when I was here, I would have seen his gravesite. Instead, I came back today a week later, and it took me about an hour to find it. So then I wondered if they were married or related in some other way. But I wasn't able to find any information online indicating that they were. So maybe this is just another one of those weird coincidences that maybe really isn't a coincidence. As you know, they happen to me on just about every trip I take. And it turns out that Beverly Long was an actress. She played Nancy alongside James Dean in Rebel Without a Cause and appeared in a number of popular TV shows as well. I don't think she was in Lassie though. That really would have been weird. After retiring from the screen, she became a casting director starting her own casting agency. Now wouldn't that be interesting if she cast Hugh Riley in Lassie? Maybe that's how they knew each other and became friends and why they're buried next to each other. Or not. If anyone happens to know that, please share with us in the comments section. Hugh Riley died from emphysema in Burbank, California at the age of 82 on July 17, 1998. Actor Tommy Reddick, who played Jeff Miller during the early years of the show, died from heart failure in Marina del Rey, California at the young age of 54 on February 15, 1996. He was cremated and his ashes were reportedly scattered at sea. George Cleveland, who played Gramps Miller, died from a heart attack at the age of 71 in Burbank, California on July 15, 1957. His burial place is unknown. Arthur Space, who played Doc Weaver the Vet, died in Hollywood, California from cancer at the age of 74 on January 13, 1983. He was reportedly laid to rest in a non-cemetery burial. George Chandler, who played Uncle Purdy, died from cancer at the age of 86 in Panorama City on June 10, 1985. He's laid to rest not far from here at Forest Lawn Memorial Park in Glendale in the great mausoleum that's not open to the public. Jan Clayton, who played Ellen Miller on the show, died from cancer in West Hollywood, California at the age of 66 on August 28, 1983. She's laid to rest at Fairview Cemetery in Tularosa, New Mexico. Roger Bray, who played Ranger Corey Stewart, died from a heart attack at the age of 65 in Bishop, California on May 7, 1983. He was cremated and his ashes were scattered. I'm happy to say that June Lockhart, who played Ruth Martin, is now 95 years old, and John Provost, who played Timmy Martin, is now 70 years old. This morning on my way to Valhalla Cemetery, I spotted this tribute memorial mural to basketball legend Kobe Bryant and his daughter Gianna. It's located at the corner of Victory Boulevard and Sampson in North Hollywood, and I thought you might want to see it. It's hard to believe that their tragic accident was six months ago. And this week, I'd like to give a shout out and a very big thank you to my latest PayPal and Patreon supporters, Zachary Lazard, David Bond, Robert Dimbeck, and Delaney Embry. 
And I also want to thank my existing Patreon supporter, Daniel Guy, for recently increasing his pledge. Your generosity really does help make trips like this possible. So until our next trip down memory lane together, happy travels, everyone.